it's been a process, but I think the thing that has really helped me and propelled it to continue is hearing the testimonies and hearing yeah. people say, people sing and people, you know, seeing people do the songs at their church. It's like all oh, this, the, the reason I was so insecure about it is because this gift that God gave me, is not for me? It's not mm-hmm. for me. And it's for, it's for other people. You know, it's for, it's for people that may not ever, you know, understand how to be able to adequately express what the presence of God feels like them, feels like to them. And, um, but I, I got exposed to it, man, and, and it changed my life. And so, um, I just, I just, I, I, that's, that's why I'm doing it. Welcome everyone. Today we are joined by Draylon Young is a gifted singer, songwriter, and an anointed worship leader that has blessed the world with his music. In our conversation, we talked about his incredible backstory, how he approaches songwriting, why he believes investing in apostolic music is so important, stories from his latest live recording, and much more. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you for joining us today. I am honored to be here. I'm a fan of this podcast and all of y'all's uh, uh, content that you guys put out. And if you hear my family in the background, <laughs> just don't just try your best to like block that out. Uh, I have a four year old son and I have a one year old daughter that she has been going through it because we're getting ready to have another baby. Yeah. Um, so. I not only have a pregnant wife, but I have two screaming children. So uh, I'm going to stay on here as long as I possibly can. <laughs> as if you don't already have enough on your plate. Yes, just, absolutely. Just keep adding to it, man. Oh, it's great. Just, it's great to finally uh, get you on the podcast. We've been trying to get this going for a bit, but your schedule is just insane. And, and with the album coming out, we thought this would be the great time, a great time to get you on to talk about that. But before we dive into the new album. Um, I like to start out these conversations by uh, the audience getting to know the guest a little bit. Most of them would know you okay. as, you know, Draylon Young, the, the worship leader, the singer, songwriter, um, but they may not know you uh, or your story. So if you wouldn't mind sharing a little bit of your background, that sort of thing, just so the audience can get to know you a bit more. Yeah, uh, my name is Draylon. I uh, grew up in Dallas, Texas, and i um, I grew up in a family that was not in church. Uh, My mother and father were not married. um, And we had, like I said, we had no understanding of church at all. Uh, My mother was a really bad drug addict. Um, We, I I never really knew my father. We were away from him when I was probably about three or four years old. And me and my mom moved around a lot with her, you know, being uh, addicted to drugs I, it, it takes your life, you know? So like we moved around, I would say at least 12 to 15 times when I was a kid, uh, I moved into different family members' homes for a little while. Uh, I would, you know, we would stay at random shelters here and there. And, uh, you know, I mean, it's just like it is in the movies. I mean, it's like, you know, you walk into a big room and there's like bump beds everywhere. Uh, I remember staying in a place in Dallas called the crisis center. And, um, you know, man, it was just, it was, it took, but the crazy, the crazy part of that entire, you know, spectrum of my life was I never really knew that that stuff was really going on, you know, like, Mm. so it was just kind of like a long adventure. Like the Lord just had protected me from that. And, uh, you know, I was probably about nine or 10 years old is whenever, you know, they, you know, my, my parents at the time, which my, my uncle and my grandfather, they told me like, Hey, you know, um, you know, this is why this was happening, or this is, this is what that came from, you know, and uh, gave me perspective, you know, but uh, I'm going to try to con- condense the story as much mm. as possible. Like I said, uh, I-, I lived with my mom for a long time. And, um, you know, we would go in and out of different places. And, um, you know, there would be uh, moments where, um, you know, like this one specific moment, that I remember as a kid that I, that I didn't really put together. Uh, there'd be times I'd come home, um, or I'd wake up in the middle of the night and my mom wasn't there. Like she was in at the house and it was just me and her. And, uh, 
then she'd be gone for a couple of days. And I had to call my, had to call my uncle to come pick me up. And, um, it's cause she was using, you know, or she got in jail from stealing from somebody trying to get drugs or whatever. And, um, so that happened a lot when I was a kid. And then, uh, then I ended up moving in with like family members. I'd stay with my aunt and my uncle, uh, for like probably like four years or so. And then I moved out with my mom again and then it happened again. And then, then I finally moved in with my grandfather, which is her dad and her, her brother, which is my uncle. Uh, they had really, you know, they had just moved into a house together and, uh, took me in when I was probably about 11 years old. And before I got into that house, uh, my uncle, uh, you know, he, he had heard of, uh, brother Irvin Baxter on the radio. Oh yeah. And, uh, so he, you know, brother Baxter's on the radio talking politics, politics and religion was the name of the show. My uncle's a very big podcast guy. He's always loved podcasts. And, um, so he was listening to, it, it was, he was listening to something, uh, on the radio. And then like later in the day, brother Baxter's show would come on. Mm. And so he heard, the you know just the conversation that was going on and people were calling in all week asking questions and somebody asked a question you know what, what must i do to be saved and you know somebody said man you need you know brother brother baxter would hear that over and over again and he answered it the same way it's like you know this is a prophecy show but i'll never over overlook an opportunity to connect with somebody like you mm-hmm. need to repent be baptized in jesus name and um you know the whole x 238 thing and um he heard that three times in a row, like three days in a row. And, you know, he just wow. took it to heart and started, um, you know, search, searching and started reading. And uh, he started praying, you know, started seeking God. And uh, he ended up uh, right before he moved into the house with my grandfather. He uh, he had an experience with God on his back porch. And the way he explains it to me is, you know, he basically heard felt like he heard a voice you know, tell him to come outside. So he came outside and, you know, he felt like God was speaking to him and, you know, telling him, Hey, I want you to worship me. And he said, Draylon, I was so embarrassed because I didn't know what to do. You know, we, we, we'd never grown up in church. We had nothing, no idea. And uh, this God that he'd been reading about, you know, that he had been praying to that he felt like he heard something. And, and, uh, and then he said, worship me. He said, I don't know what to do. And so he said, the only thing I could think to do, uh, in that moment was to sing the song, Jesus loves me. This I know for the Bible tells mm, yeah. me so. And he said, he began to sing that over and over and over again. And he said, tears started falling down his face. And he said, wow. you know, his mouth started moving and, you know, he got the Holy ghost literally just praying on his back porch by himself. And, um, you know, after that he had moved in with my, my grandfather at that time, they had got a house together and, um, and it was right before he got the call from my mom asking if we could come stay with them. Mm-hmm. And, uh, so then I, he said, well, we'll take Draylon, but you can't come cause they knew what was going on. And so, uh, so I moved in with them and they've been my parents. They're the ones that got me through, you know, middle school, high school, uh, you know, taking me to church and getting me connected to the youth group and, uh, send me off to college and, you know, that they've they're, they're been my parents, you know? So, mm-hmm. uh, so yeah, that's, that's pretty much in a nutshell. I moved in with them. We started going to North cities. Uh, UPC in Garland, mm-hmm. Texas, mm-hmm. Pastor D.G. Hargrove. Mm-hmm. I was a part of their youth group, uh, awesome youth group, incredible. We we had incredible God encounters, and uh, it just changed my life. I mean, it I mean, it changed my life completely, uh, those people. And uh, I did have a hunger for God, the things mm-hmm. of God, and I was just a product of my environment. I just wanted to be around those people, you know, and um, – I ended up going to the church school. I made the decision to go to church school. And, uh, you know, the tough part about that was we actually lived in Lancaster, Texas, okay. which was like 45 minutes to an hour away from Garland. If you're driving, depending upon yeah. traffic. And so, um, you know, uh, I had asked him, I'm like, Hey, I, you know, I really, I really feel like I'm supposed to go to the church school. There was a lot of stuff going on at public school. I was exposed to a lot of things. And I just knew that the Lord was calling me to, to be in ministry. You know, I just, I, I that's something I, I knew that was on my life. And I knew if I stayed here, it would been, it's just been a really tough thing. And so my, my parents agreed. They were like, yeah, we'd love for you to go. But you know, the only way that you'd be able to go is, is you'd have to get there, you know? And, <laughs> uh, my grandfather, 
uh, actually worked. He, he just recently retired from the dart transit system. So that's like, it's like the, the trains and, you know, the, the bus route. There's a huge thing in Dallas. It's called the dart and it literally will take you, uh, anywhere in Dallas mm -hmm. and like through public transportation. And so, um, he worked for them. So he had a free pass for him and a free pass for somebody else. And so I just got that free pass. And every day I woke up at 5 a.m. with my grandfather. He dropped me off in front of the train station. I'd ride at one end to the other end, uh, all the way from Ledbetter Station to downtown Garland Station. It was an hour one way. And so I'd get off, walk across the street to a bus station, get on the bus. The bus will drop me off right in front of the school. Uh, and I did that every day of my high school career. Wow. Um, and so, uh, man, though, in those long rides, those long, those hour, those hour and a half long rides, I had a little iPod nano and I listened <laughs> to, Is I listened to Israel and new breed. I'd listen to Ty Tribbett. I'd listen to, uh, all of these, you know, incredible music artists that I looked up to growing up. And, um, I just indulged myself and I was obviously specifically, uh, moved by Israel and new breed and their music and, um, just, just. At that time, it was a very pivotal time that they were writing such uh, incredible, impactful worship music at the time, yeah. Yeah. and uh, I, I was I was really moved by that and saw videos of Israel and watched tons of stuff on YouTube, and uh, he, he really was a huge inspiration. And I learned how to play guitar just watching videos from him for years and years, and uh, and then I went off to Bible school. Uh, you know, went there for four years, went to Indiana Bible College, met my wife there, and uh, later on. You know, got connected uh, through some mutual friends with Pastor Hoffman here in, in uh, Sterling Heights. And uh, we've been here for about eight years since I graduated from mm. Bible college. So so that's in a nutshell, I've tried to condense it, but uh, <laughs> it's kind of a kind of a lot going on. So, Well, that's a that's an amazing story. I was going to ask you when when you really uh, first started getting into music, um, yeah. given your your upbringing, because it was more transient. It would have been quite difficult yeah. to have instruments and so on. When did you really get into it? Was it in high school? You know, I've always loved music. I just didn't always love church music, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I, Music has been a huge part of my life, my family's life. I mean, music has always been a thing um, for us. My uncle, you know, actually before, before he had that God encounter, before, you know, I moved in with them, you know, he – he was a big Prince fan growing up. Oh yeah. And okay. uh, if anybody knows Prince, I mean, he, <laughs> he's like, it, it, it was, you know, Prince is, you know, you know, obviously he's, he's not living now, but um, you know, he mastered four instruments. He mastered the keys, mastered uh, guitar, mastered drums, and like probably either, you know, uh, bass or, you know, something like mm -hmm. that, or, you know, whatever. I think it was like, those are the four instruments that I knew that he could play, you know? Right. And he was one of the best songwriters, you know, of our, of our time, you know? And, uh, you know, my uncle loved his music, loved all different types of music. My uncle was very eclectic in, you know, his, his taste, you know, mm. um, you know, we would kind of lean more towards, you know, hip hop or, R&B, obviously, just because of our culture, but he liked everything. And he actually, on my fifth birthday, or no, it was my uh, for Christmas when I was five. Uh, so it literally would be the same age as my son right now. Like he's about to turn five. So when Christmas comes, he bought my first guitar. And wow. it's it's funny. I'm sitting downstairs in my office, and I actually have it right here. This is you my first it. guitar. That's amazing. Yeah, my first Fender. Uh, my first Fender classical acoustic guitar. And, you know, he bought that for me when I was five and we, we knew nothing about church. We knew nothing about music and anything, but just felt like the Lord used him, you know? Mm. Um, and he, he bought me the guitar and paid for lessons for a year. And I hated it as a kid, you know, <laughs> hated going to guitar. So I would go to guitar center and, you know, set up lessons and go and I would hate it, hate it, hate it. But, um, so I just put it in a case and then he, you know, I think he kept it through the time that, you know, I had been gone and whatnot and moved around a ton. And uh, the minute time when it was tough for me to go back to move with him, he had it there and, you know, he wanted me to practice and learn. And, uh, and then when I found Israel and music and stuff, I, I just, I started to pick it back up again. And, um, but, you know, music has always been a big 
part of what I love and what mm-hmm. I, you know, I've, I've always sang when I was a kid and um, I could mimic, I can mimic people, you know, that sort of thing. Um, but, uh, but yeah, man, I, I've always loved music, but where it clicked for me was, uh, you know, I had, my uncle had came home and he had clients, you know, he did hair, he did, he did women's hair, but he also was a barber. He cut my hair every, you know, every week. So I had free haircuts growing up, you know? <laughs> uh, but, uh, he, he had clients and one of his clients for years had known that he was a Christian and that he had been coming to church. And so, uh, he gave him some, some Christian CDs and my uncle, you know, I think this was his way of wanting me to stop listening to secular music. So he brought those CDs to me and was like, Hey, I want you to try, you know, listen to these CDs. And, you know, in that bundle of CDs, he gave me a CD, uh, from this guy named Jay Moss. Oh, and, yeah. you know, there's the Jay Moss project. Yeah, yeah, number yeah. one, the guys from Detroit. And, uh, you know, he gave me the Kurt Franklin hero album. That's when that mm-hmm. came out. It was like 2006 or something like that. Uh, Preston Wood Choir, which was like a popular choir in the Dallas area, big church in Dallas. And the last one was Israel and Newbury live from another level. Yeah. And that's the one with Friend of God and, mm-hmm. you know, uh, all these different songs. And I had been going to church at that time, but the music wasn't really connecting with me at the time. Like I just wasn't, you know, able to really connect with it. Um, but I saw on the back of the CD that, that, you know, if it's a friend of God and he wrote the song. So then I listened to it and I was like, Oh wow. Like the, you know, when we sing the song, it doesn't sound like that at all. <laughs> uh, and, you know, so, uh, but I think that there was something that the Lord was doing right there. It was like, man, you know, I was able to connect with the song more Mm-hmm. when I got to church because I had been listening to it at home. Yeah, yeah. And I think that principle is so strong. I know my pastor has been talking about that lately. It's so important for you to get, it's so important for you to bring the fire, you know, from your house to church. Mm-hmm. You know, if you just rely on the church to be your fire every single week, it'll go dry, you know, as yeah. soon as you walk out the door. And so uh, that was the first time that it, it came alive to me that like, oh no, like the real, the real love, the real, fire the real passion and power is you getting it at home and then when you go to church when you hear the song you're able to connect with the different because you've been worshiping to the song all week long yeah, you know yeah, yeah. and uh and then i went and looked up on youtube that's whenever youtube was like really blowing up uh, like mm-hmm. like for me, for me when, I when i was like 13 um and man i i saw the video of him leading worship with a guitar with his team and people worshiping singing the songs and it just did something to me. I mean, it was just like, man, like if I could do that, that would be amazing. You know, like I, I feel like that's something that, you know, I, I, I don't know why, but I just feel like I'm, sup- I'm supposed to be watching this right now. I'm supposed mm-hmm. to be exposing myself to this for some reason, you know. And, uh, and, you know, looking back, you know, I never thought that I would ever be able to contribute uh, you know, songs that other people would sing, you know, mm. it's actually kind of crazy. Cause, uh, on my, on this new album, uh, Psalm Sims and spirit songs, uh, when I was younger, my uncle would show, he showed me this tape of, uh, it's a, it's like a, it's a, it's a, I don't know if it's a cassette tape, but it's like a VHS, VHS yeah. of, of Prince live somewhere, you know, and he's got an acoustic guitar and it's just him and an acoustic guitar and he's sitting on a stool and like all these people and he's just playing through a few of his songs or his, some of his favorite songs and the crowd singing all these songs, you know? Yeah. And, and he said, you know, Draylon, wouldn't you want to be able to do that one day? You know, I think I was like, I don't know, 11 years old or 12 or I don't know how old I was. And uh, honestly, I was like, man, I I don't know if I really want to do that or not, you know. And then that was before I got kind of hooked into what, you know, to what I was doing. And on this new record, I had a on the second. This is the second album. So the first album that came out and I was so overwhelmed by how many churches have been doing the songs. You know, Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just it's a shock to me, you know, that I can go somewhere, start singing a song and people know it, you know. And uh, so there was a moment I, I, I was I was with the with the people in the room and I was like, hey, guys, you know, the first record came out. If you know these songs, I want you to sing them with me. And we started singing. And it was like, bro, you know, I mean, it's not like, you know, 10,000 people. <laughs> it was like it, fe- it felt like 10, <laughs> it felt like 10,000. Like, 
you know, it was like 700, you know, something like that. And it was just so moving, man, mm. that like, it was just that moment again, but I was able to lead these people in the presence of God about songs about Jesus, you know? Yeah. And, um, man, it was just so special, man. So special, you know, your, um, your, your uncle sounds like the man, like just, bro, he just saw something in you. It, it's awesome. Bro, Having someone like that in he, your corner. He's a, he's, he's a very special guy. Mm. He really is. He's a very special guy. And, you know, I think, um, I think, you know, God, like I said, man, God just, he keeps good books. You know, he, he does, he, he knows, he knows how things are going to go. And, and it's just as, as bad as it may seem at a time, like, you, you know, he, he just, he just knows how it's going to end. And so he allows those times to happen. And man, my uncle and my grandfather have been nothing, uh, but, uh, incredible men. Their, uh, their name. So my grandfather's name is Richard LeVon Young Jr. And my uncle is the third. You know, mm -hmm. So he's Richard LeVon the third. And, you know, I, there's a great scripture. It says, and my God shall supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory. And I've always <laughs> taken that as like, man, these guys were my two riches that he knew that, that he knew that I That's needed awesome. so bad, man. Yeah. And uh, so they're just, they're incredible, man. I, my, my mm. whole life has changed because of them. So absolutely. Yeah. One of the things that really, I, I believe sets you apart uh, in your ministry is, is not just your singing ability. You know, there's a lot of great singers out there, not just your, musicality the way you play but your songwriting like the vast majority of the songs that you're singing are songs that you wrote or co-wrote with other people when did you when did that start developing uh when did you because you you said you love music you like music but there's a difference between liking i like music <laughs> i can't write songs <laughs> especially not songs that that the world is singing um so when did when did that start for you when did you realize that you had a talent for that i i prayed a lot when I was younger, I listened to so much music. I think that there was, there was this, there's also something about, you know, somebody that's going to write something that you just indulge yourself in the art of whatever that is. Mm. And for me, it's always been worship music. Uh, I, you know, when you think of somebody that's going to write, like write books or, you know, whatever the case is, their mind the way they hold books in terms of reading they've read probably so many books to be able to know how a reader thinks or how a writer is trying to express something or um, you know like an actor or an actress they have studied they've seen probably so many films that it, it's just it, like it's a part of who they are mm -hmm. um, and uh you know, so uh, I think that's what it was for me is I, there was a period where I just I just listened. Mm. I just I listened to so much, so many different styles of music. And um, I think the Lord used it. You know, I don't obviously I don't listen to a lot of secular music now. Um, I actually don't really listen to any at all. It's most of the time I'm Mostly, I don't really listen to music a lot now, which is crazy. Like I, as much music as I did listen, to, I don't really listen to a lot now, like I used to. You got um, kids, bro. But, you're listening to you're listening uh, to kids' music. <laughs> you know, honestly, I listen to sermons and like podcasts uh, now, yeah, yeah, yeah. So do I. like content stuff, you know, mm -hmm. or conversations. I love stuff like that now um obviously i'll listen to music here and there but most of the time if i'm listening to my music it's like i'm listening to a mix i'm trying to tell them to switch this or change yeah, yeah. that or you know um but man the the writing it came from a long period of just listening just just listening and hearing i the way that people have books you know i have albums in my mm. mind you know like albums with songs you know, because, you know, you don't really appreciate albums anymore. You know, it's kind of like no, yeah. you just get your favorite song. But, man, I, I went through that space where I wanted the whole album of, a, of, an, of an artist that I liked. And um, so I listened to a lot of music. But there was a moment that I I wrote my very first song. And uh, the first time I put together something, I think I was probably 14 or 15. And 
I wrote a I wrote a verse and I wrote a chorus or a pre-chorus and a chorus, wrote a bridge and I sang it for our like, you know, our high school talent show or whatever we had. And um, it was cool, but like a lot of people didn't really like take it serious. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I kind of like put it away for a while, like for a long time. And but I would still kind of like play and think of, man, it'd be cool if we did this, you know, and I just I just wrote by myself and didn't tell anybody. And then I went to Bible college uh, my second year. You know, IBC Praise uh, is a group that, you know, is kind of, you know, Lindell kind of chooses these Mm -hmm. specific people. And the second year I had I had been able to be a part of the team. And he he said, hey, we're going to record two albums this year. You know, and news of time, it's just IBC does one big one every year yeah. in the in like the winter. And uh, he said, no, but we're going to do two. I'm going to do Praise to do their own album in November. And then so we ended up like recording 25 songs that year. Praise <laughs> did. Wow. And, um, you know, uh, he said, hey, we're going to do this album. You know, we kind of want it to be a little, you know, like songs a little different. But we want some original songs. Do you guys have any? Does anyone have any song? And I remember being in the practice at Calvary. We were practicing for something else. and I had a guitar there. I was like, Hey, I, you know, I wrote this song. It's called make a change. Mm-hmm. And it was kind of like a mission song. You know, like I kind of had this idea for a song and I used it for a mission. Like I had a songwriting class that I took from brother Tim Pedigo. And he was like, Draylon, you have a really good gift of being able to put songs together. You should, you, you need to keep writing, you know? Mm-hmm. And uh, so then I showed it to Lindell. Lindell was like, Oh, I love the song. I think the lyrics are so great. Like, Hey, let's, you know, let's record this. And it ended up being the title track for that record. Um, and that was the first time, like when we like going through writing a song, getting with the band, get the singers and like producing the whole thing, being a part of it. And then like seeing the end product, like in front mm-hmm. of people singing it. And it was like, man, like it just, so, something hit me in my heart. Like, man, okay, this is what, this is, there's something on this, you know? Mm-hmm. And, uh, from there, you know, then I went, I, I graduated and I ended up coming here and uh you know started writing songs and uh a really good friend of mine his name is jamil mclaurin mm-hmm. he uh you know we would write songs together we wrote a couple songs for his church that he started and uh, i would write he would he challenged me to write he said draylon you write really good songs and he prophesied something to me he said you know draylon i believe that you're the psalmist of this generation and he said you need to you need to keep writing these songs and and that and that there was something that happened that day when we were in prayer and he said that and I wrote it down in my journal and I, and I kept it and I kept writing from that moment on and I just kept writing you know I kept putting stuff together and you know put stuff together somebody asked me I remember James that was doing his first record he asked he said hey man you got any songs you know that that you know that you would you know want to put on this record I said yeah I got a song it's a song called Hallelujah mm-hmm. that uh, Brian Pound sings uh, and you know, Brian Pound's Brian Pound kills the song. I mean, like he does all the time. Yeah, and it was just voice. another one, another one of those moments where you're like, man, like there's something to this, you know, there's a fruit, there's, there was a fruit there, you know, and, uh, and, you know, being a part and being on Gimme Jesus for his live recording, uh, you know, gave me the opportunity to be able to see what it looks like doing it on your own. And that, you know, probably in a couple of years later, uh, I felt I felt very strongly from the Lord. I was supposed to do a live recording, and uh, and we just we just went for it, man. You know, so uh, there's been a lot of people that have been a part of that journey. You know, for me, mm-hmm. I'm kind of a I'm not a big uh, you know I'm not a big you know I would say a huge faith guy. You know, like where I'm just like, oh, I got it, bam, we're gonna go <laughs> do it. You know, like this is that's just not my you know my 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 natural. I'm more of a you know, okay, let's just like, we'll wait and see, you know, how <laughs> take it, goes, it easy. You know? <laughs> yeah. Like I'm not going to go out there and just stick my neck out, you know, sort mm. of, sort of guy. But, um, so yeah, man, it, it's been a, it's been a process, but I think the thing that has really helped me and propelled it to continue is hearing the testimonies and hearing yeah. people say, people sing and people, you know, seeing people do the songs at their church. It's like, all this, the, the reason I was so insecure about it is because this gift that God gave me isn't for me. It's not for me. And it's for, it's for other people. You know, it's for, it's for people that may not ever, 
you know, understand how to be able to adequately express what the presence of God feels like them, feels like to them. And, um, but I, I got exposed to it, man, and, and it changed my life. And so, um, I just, I just, I'm, I, that's, that's why I'm doing it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and you guys, like, there's a, a whole group of you guys that are just amazing. Like you're changing the, the landscape, uh, of the church as a whole. Like I remember growing up, I, I'm only a few years older than you, so we would have been singing worship to the same sort of songs growing okay, up. Yeah. I grew up in the States. and um, Where'd like, you grow we, up? I grew up in Kansas City, Missouri. Okay, Missouri. Yeah, okay, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, you would sing these songs, but uh, like all the apostolic songs are songs that were written by, you know, um, yeah, the apostolic believers. They weren't songs yeah. that you could sing in church. They were like songs you'd listen to in the car or yeah. <laughs> you know, so on. And I wouldn't listen to them, but other people might. Uh, yeah. you know, and there there wasn't like this this area where there was a connection between the songwriter and then the songs that were singing that were in line with, you know, the theology. Like you wouldn't have a yeah. random come in and preach a sermon who <laughs> who doesn't believe right. what you believe. Uh, I'm not saying it Absolutely. should be that strict when it comes to to what we sing, but it's just so awesome to see that we've got, you know, these guys that are called anointed and writing these songs that we can worship to. Like my daughters yeah. are going to grow up in a world where they that their favorite artists uh, I've said this before, but all of their favorite artists are apostolics. It's you, <laughs> uh, it's Frankie Taylor, it's James Wilson. Yeah. Like those, those are the, the the guys that when when we hop in the car, they're like, oh, I'll tell them, oh, Draylon Young just dropped his album. I'm like, oh, we'll listen to it. Let's listen to it. You know, and <laughs> like for me, that was Kirk Franklin or Israel right, or uh, right. Hillsong. But uh, it's really cool to see the, you know my girls being able to grow up in an environment like this. And yes. I, I wanted to ask you, why do you think it's so important that? that apostolics do write and produce songs. Why is it that you guys, uh, you and, and some of your friends, the people you've worked with on other albums, why do you guys find it so important to do all of the amazing amount of work that you guys do to produce these songs, to get them out to the church? Well, I think, number one, you know, I, I, I can't speak for anyone else. Um, I can't speak for anybody else, but I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why I feel like I'm supposed to do it. I, and I know all those guys, they're great dudes. You know, like, I mean, we've, we're, we're, we're buddies, we're friends, you know, we, we support each other. Um, and I'm sure they would say the same thing that I'm about to say. Uh, but the reason I do this is because I legitimately I legitimately feel that if I don't do it, that I would be disobeying the voice of God mm -hmm. because, you know, and I always talk about this as a burning bush moment. You know, you got so, and I, and I, I, I connect with Moses a lot. You know, it's like, man, you know, you feel abandoned, you know, you're raised with some other different types of people. You have so many different types of, uh, voices in your life. Uh, you, you, the Bible says that he was slow to speak. It doesn't say that it had, he had a speech impediment. It says that he was slow to speak. And it also says that he is a, um, he was the meekest man in the Bible. And what I, what I get from that is that he was very, very much of a, you know, the word meek means like quiet strength. He wasn't mm -hmm. quick to just blast off his mouth and say, this is what we're doing, you know, slow of speech a slow tongue, like he, he, he probably didn't have a lot of confidence in what he was saying. And the reason that, you know, I think that he didn't have a lot of confidence even more was when he was speaking to a burning bush that was on fire, that wasn't being consumed, that told him to throw a staff on the ground pick it up. It became a snake. He picked it up. It became a stick again. Like you were performed all these different miracles. His hand was leprous. Then it was mm -hmm. fixed. Like, bro, I mean, it was like all these miracles that God performed to qualify. Like, Hey, I'm not qualifying you. I'm letting, I'm performing miracles to you so that you know that I am, that I am, you know? Mm. And, and even that did not go to Moses like 
just say, all right, bro, like I'm going, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. He still had, he still had his doubts. He still mm-hmm. didn't believe in himself. You know, he wasn't confident and, you know, you know, I've preached this message before. I, I preached this message called when God says, okay. You know, when me and you, me and you, you know, grew up, you had our parents that they would tell us something and they would tell us again. And then they would tell us a third time. And then they would say these words. They would say the most terrifying words ever. They would say, okay. <laughs> like that, that was the worst thing that could ever happen. You know, uh, my son is starting to connect that when I say, all right, you know, like, okay. <laughs> there's probably a lot of destruction that's going to come from <laughs> after that. Okay. And for Moses that, okay, God said, okay, take your brother with you. Mm. You know, he, I know that he can speak well, take him with you. And I believe that that was an opportunity that God would have been able to show him something else that he probably didn't have to bring his brother, but it was like, okay, you're not going to believe me. So I'm going to go ahead and, you know, fix this problem that you just don't seem to believe me on. and you know, it's like, man, I don't want that. (laughs) I don't, I don't, I don't want God to be like, okay, you know, but I can connect with him on that because it's just like, man, you're asking me to lead millions of people out of slavery in revolt, basically against the president of, of their time, you know, and, you know, the only way that you can do something like that is if you're absolutely convinced that the voice of God has told you this is what you need to do. And and to be honest, if you know my background, again, I expressed it, um, me being an artist or trying to put music out or write, so that's how it feels to me. It's like, mm. you know, this is so impossible because I, I know how much money it costs. I know how good your songs have to be in order to do this or how connections you have to have to be. And it's like, man, God, are you sure you want me to do this? You know, Mm. Uh, it would be a lot safer for me to not do it this way, to just hook on to someone else's wagon and be like, okay, this is, you know, what I'm a part of. But I just believe that God wants us to do this because, you know, I believe we do have something different to offer. Um, I believe that the like these men that you mentioned, Frankie Taylor, James Wilson, uh, David Jennings, uh, you know, Mark Crowder, the list goes mm-hmm. on. Um, these people are people, not only people that are talented, you know, not only are they anointed, but I believe that the favor of God is on their life. Mm-hmm. Um you know, I think that, you know, f- favor is different than, than blessing. You know, God, God can bless anybody, you know, God blesses just anybody. God has blessed everybody. God, you know, can put his spirit on a donkey, you know, and, and mm-hmm. speak through him, you know, uh, God can put his spirit, you know, he can, he can put all this, he can do whatever he wants, but it's like, man, when you have the favor of God, where, whenever you are a part of something or, you know, God ble- opens a door for you to go somewhere. And, and because of that's, that's a, that's a Joseph anointing. The house where he was at was blessed because Joseph was there. Was and I it. see the blessing. I see the blessing on these men's life. I see that they are, you know, honest men. I see that they're submitted to their pastors. I see that they're, you know, good husbands to their, to their, to their wives and, and, and good fathers to their children and that they're trying to do the best that they can. All of those things combined with the talent, with the anointing submitted to the word of God and to the spirit of God is what blesses, you know, mm. the, the, the outcome of this music. It's nothing different than anybody else. And, uh, you know, the opportunities that, that come, um, you know, the, the blessings that come or whatever, I know they're going to be rooted in, 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 in people that take the light. Cause these guys, yeah, they love music. They love this. They love that. But at the same time, and they love God, bro. Yeah. They just yeah. want to, they just want to, they just want to please God. Yeah. And, There's a depth and, to, to all those guys. Yeah, There's, yeah. It's not just songwriters, not just worship leader, but you know, they're men of God and 
and, it, yes. and it's awesome, awesome to see. And, and God also rewards faith. When you guys take this step of faith, you know, as yes. you said, it takes a lot of money to put these projects together. And you yes, take that step does. of faith, <laughs> God's going to reward it, you know? Yes. Um, yeah. But, and uh, he has. Uh, he has, man. It's been so, that's been the most rewarding part is, is you just don't know. You just, you just never know, you know, like, mm. you know, it, God just, uh, you know, another thing that the Lord's been speaking to me, you know, as of late is God is not, God is not required to repeat himself either. You know, when, when God speaks, it just happens, you know, like he didn't have to repeat, let there be light. He said it one time and it happened, you know? Right. So when he speaks, something has to happen. And a lot of times, you know, we got to be told something multiple times, you know, mm. and, and man, I'm trying to make sure that when the Lord speaks the first time, you know, go for it, man. Yeah. If he said it, it's going to happen, you know, mm. and I've just watched, you know, people pour into us, people give people buy the, you know, the, the albums, buy the multi-tracks, buy the merch, you know, bring us to their church and let us work with their teams. And, you know, it, it's, it has, it has paid back so much more than mm. what, than what it took to get it there. Now it, it took everything I had, you know, <laughs> yeah, literally. Yeah. I mean, I yeah. mean, a hundred percent, you know, yeah. like the, the amount of these records cost more usually than what we as worship pastors or music directors, or even people that are, it, it costs more than what we make in an entire year, in a year you yeah. know? And, mm -hmm. and it's like, man, when you take a step of faith right there, it's really tough, but man, I, it's just, it's just been amazing watching God yeah. just bring it all back, man. It's just, it's, it's amazing. Well, I, what I also love about what you guys are doing, especially yourself, is it's just it's just top notch. You know, the recordings are good, the the videos are amazing, uh, especially in this last album. I don't know, I forget who it was you have um, uh, doing your video edits, but some of the the music videos that they put out from, I believe it was um, was it Child of God, or it might have been. It might have been, or Jesus. I think it was Jesus, where they did like a, a retro. Was it that one yeah. where they did like the, the yeah, retro so, effect? That was mad. That was so cool. So the so the guy that I had directed is guy named Shannon Chance. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. He he lives in Dallas now, and uh, just an incredible director. He's a filmmaker, uh, apostolic filmmaker, and he owns a company called Don Pictures. That mm. is just, I mean, he studied film and uh, just, I mean, he's got a heart of gold. He's taken. He, we, we've taken him out with us whenever we go on tour and he captures all of our social media and puts it out. But like the dude is just, I mean, on fire for God, just an amazing, yeah, awesome. amazing dude. And uh, so he had this cool idea of, he's like, Hey man, like I got, you know, you know, all these shooters here for the, for the night. But he's like, you know, I had this idea of, of buying a film camera, like renting a film camera and just getting so much footage, you know, throughout the night. And at least for each song, just a little bit. Um, and, uh, you know, so every every video has a piece has of, a bit of film. It. So every every video you'll see at the beginning, it's kind of like a little collage real quick of what's happening that night through the film. And you'll see it even throughout the, the video edits. Uh, so he's just super creative, man. Yeah, like, it's so cool. It's just it's really, really cool, yeah. Yeah, well, the, your latest album just came out. Um, was uh, songs and hymns and spirit songs. Uh, yes. You went with part one, right? So the, you, you're guaranteeing yes. another part to this, at least a second yes. one. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. So we did, we did the, we did that. Um, it was based out of Ephesians. Uh, I heard my pastor preach and I'm sure you guys in Sydney know Pastor oh, Harold Hoffman. Yeah, we love Brother Hoffman. One of the, one of the best, <laughs> one of the most incredible minds I've ever met. And uh, it's just a privilege to be able to call him pastor. Uh, but he actually uh, would challenge me a lot about, you know, Draylon, you know, you, 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 you keep writing these songs, you know, and, and uh, he talked to me about Psalms and hymns and, and spirit songs. He said, now Psalms, we know what a Psalm is, you know, Psalms, you know, he, he you know, David wrote a whole bunch of Psalms and wrote, songs with, with, with praise and praise songs, uplifting songs. And, and he said, there's hymns, you know, those are special, 
special hymns and and you know in worship when you start singing certain songs it just does something when you start singing tis so sweet to trust in jesus when you start singing uh you know amazing grace how sweet the sound there's just a there's just something that happens and there's something special about those songs that are that are called hymns and i've heard the the saying that hymns are for him you know those are mm. very special songs and so we never want to go away with those you know we never want those songs to go away and finally you know he said we know what a hymn is we know what a psalm is but what is a spiritual song you know and that's in ephesians 5 and 19 and he said i think it's a it's a song that when you when you're filled with the spirit bible says you're filled with the spirit you speak in the tongue you speak in tongues he said a spirit song a spiritual song is i think that's a song when you're speaking when you're singing in tongues where you where you lose all you know you just lose all vocabulary and that heavenly language comes out while you're worshiping and that happens so much during worship and it's another level of Hey, we praised in Psalms. We read the, you know, how good and pleasant it is for brothers to dwell together in unity. Uh, let everything that hath breath praise you, the Lord. Mm. And then you go to Him, something a little bit more closer to who God is, something more personal to who He is. And then you enter into this realm where you don't know what you're singing. Bible says, making melody in your heart toward mm. God, and and it was just kind of like one of those things that just made me so inspired. I just started writing. And um, so we, we wrote so many different songs. And so, um, yeah, so we have volume one of Psalms, Hymns and Spirit songs, and we have volume two coming uh, very, very soon. So did, did you record them uh, all on the same night or was that? A, a... Yes. So we were there. We probably recorded, we, we had I think we had like 12 or 13 songs on the docket that night. Um, and then obviously spirit took over. We, you know, mm. we started doing extra songs. I started off with, I need the, um, you know, there was another song like when, you know, we sang Jesus and we went to that, to that and he shall reign forever. Yeah. That went for a while. And, um, you know, there's another song on the record called love lifted me where I redid a hymn in like a newer way. And, uh, you know, I mean, it just, it was long, you know, we just kind of just let it go. And so, uh, it, I think when we were done mixing and mastering, it was about two hours and nine minutes of music. Wow. And so it was like, man, there's no way we're going to put all this on one record, <laughs> one. you know, especially, especially in our culture of like constant, you know, people wouldn't be able to listen to all of it. And so, you know, we're just trying to be mindful and set space it out as much as we can um so it, it worked out it worked out really well i was very very thankful for um being able to do this record is very special if you put out the two hour one we start calling you the william mcdowell of uh of <laughs> yeah <laughs> yes william mcdowell is known to put out he those. has a feature film i think when he puts out his albums. <laughs> yes <laughs> that's funny that's true though man <laughs> that's his style of writing man it's just, yeah, they it's sing good. the same they, they can sing the same thing for you know 13 minutes and it just never gets old you know it's i good, still yeah. I, I love it i love yeah. it one of the songs he has uh it's kind of it's kind of like under the radar uh it's like so just simple and you sing the same thing forever yeah uh you you are here you are here now have your way as we bow down. That's it. Like you mm. just sing that. Take control here and now. I'm like I'm done after the 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 second pre chorus, you know, it's just like so simple, but it yeah. and, that, and that's what I think is what has made worship so powerful now. It's like, man, it doesn't we've 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 found out that you don't have to be this exquisite, oh my goodness, writer that puts all this stuff together. It's like, man, I can feel that he was probably just sitting down at the piano with the few little chords that he knows and just singing. Take control here and now. Take control here and now. Like, man, that is what, that is what we need at our churches. Mm. That's what we need is 
you at home, building that fire at home and bringing that fire to the church, you know? Yeah, that's awesome. Um, so. So I'll, uh, I'll link in the show notes on this, on, on how they can get connected with you as far as uh, music goes and following you on Instagram. Um, make sure that they're following you there for all the releases and, and uh, support it, you know, support, support yes. this, this apostolic music. And, and I appreciate it's, that. it's not a, it's not a support as a charity. Like this is awesome stuff. This is quality stuff. So we should support it. <laughs> um, but I like to finish up these conversations. This has been awesome. Really enjoyed chatting with you. Um, Thank you for like having to, me, bro. I, I, it, it's been a, pr- a privilege to have you on. Um, I like to ask this to every person who comes on the podcast. Um, what drives you when it comes to ministry? What is it that is that driving force for you? Man, I would say that the, the biggest driver for me has always been to just please God. Um, I've been in a lot of conversations where, you know, um, where, where a lot of people think that you have to strive, you know, you have to get out there and do this and that. And, and man, I, you know, I, I've always been the type of person, you know, I know that there's a divine balance between, you know, going after the things with big faith, big ex- expectations that, and then also letting, letting things come to you, you know, letting, letting God orchestrate that in your life. And I've always kind of leaned more towards this way. Obviously I said that earlier, I'm, you know, I'm not a big go getter type of person because man, it, there's just something special about when God lines things up in your life and you know, without a shadow mm-hmm. of a doubt, it's not, you know, it's not like this, you know, I asked pastor one day, he was talking about somebody and he was like, man, this guy's just a prophet. He's just a prophet, you know, and he was talking very loosely with that. And I said, pastor, what is, what is, what do you say a prophet is? Like, what do you, like, how do you know that someone is a prophet? And, you know, you and I would say, well, if the person says something, you know, and it comes true, you know, it's like, Mm. well, I mean, that's a Christian. That, I mean, that's a, that's a, that's a, that's any person, you know, obviously a person that, you know, believes what God says. If God tells you, gives you a word of knowledge or gives you a word of wisdom, you know, but he said without, without missing a beat, he said, no fear, mm. no fear at all. When a prophet, a prophet is somebody that can, that can say something and just no, no fear, no shadow of a doubt in his, he, he or she's mind that this is what it is, you know? And, you know, there are people that are very, um, gifted in that area of, of being a prophet and prophecy. You have to be that way, you know, and, and there have been times that I believe that the Lord has used me in those moments, especially in worship, leading worship. God's been using me in the prophetic a lot lately. Um, but, uh, you know, the, the, the thing that I, that I look forward to is just listening to the voice of God, being in the presence of God, feeling his power, being so engulfed, into his voice and those moments where you're fasting and you're praying and you know you're just sitting down and do and doing the thing that that he has gifted you to do coupled with prayer coupled with worship and in this case it's music for me and i and you know i just i look forward to 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 seeing those moments and feeling those moments by myself and then you know having the opportunity to share that with somebody and then that same power magnified by 10, you know, it's like, it, it's, it's nothing like, there's nothing like that. I mean, there's, mm-hmm. there's just, there's just nothing like, you know, knowing and, and seeing the fruit of, of, of what God put in you by yourself with a little acoustic guitar that's so small and insignificant. And then it just grow to something that, you know, that blesses people and their churches yeah. and, and it helps people get through some of the toughest times in their life. And, and, and I want to touch a little bit on what you said, why it's so important for us to write the song. That's why it's important for us to write mm-hmm. the song. That's why, because the, the thing that God has given to us in our life needs to be spread to somebody else, because mm-hmm. I can't tell you 
how many times I've been in a moment where I needed the, I didn't have words for my situation, but it, and it was because somebody wrote a song that was going to help my, mm. that was going to help me to be able to express what I was trying to say. And, and it just, it just, it, it releases something in my soul and my spirit. And uh, I just, I can't, I'm, I'm so, I'm so engulfed by that, you know, mm. Uh, just being in the presence of God and him being pleased with my life, him being pleased with what comes out of my mouth and how we live our lives, man. That, that That's the approval that I'm fighting for. I'm fighting for the approval of my spiritual, my heavenly father. Mm. And, and, you know, sometimes I get in trouble for not really caring about, you know, the affirmation of people here on earth or, you know, in our, in our organization or, you know, whatever. It's just like, but man, I, I that's what drives me is, yeah. is spiritual validation from God. You know, that's, that's awesome, uh, man. Like, this is, this has been a great conversation. Like, like I've said, and um, I like to finish these off uh, by giving you an opportunity to share a word with the listeners, whatever God's laid on your heart. You, you shared a few things throughout this, but if there was something that you wanted to leave us with uh, as we finish up here, you're going to share this, and then I'm going to play uh, probably my favorite song from your first album. Uh, you don't really sing it that much in church, uh, but it's something that you can pray to and, and just really just meditate on the words of it. It's, it's unseen. Um, but uh, before we get to that, I want you to, if you, if you can, to share a word with the listeners as we finish up here today. Again, thanks so much for your time. Yes. Lord Jesus. I pray right now, God, that whatever you want me to say, I pray, God, that it will come across as strong and as powerful as you want it to, or whatever it is that you want me to say. In Jesus' name. I, I, I really believe that in this time, we need to be good stewards of what God has given us. If he's given you a gift to do something, the gift is not for you. Um, you need to be grateful for what God has given you. And the greatest way that you can show your gratitude is stewardship. Being able to steward something. It's one thing for somebody to give you money or for somebody to give you influence or for somebody to give you whatever it is, a talent, an ability, or whatever. But it's another thing to steward, organize things, and use it for the furtherance of his kingdom. And if we do not learn how to steward the abilities, the talents, the gifts, the callings, the resources, uh, resources being your time, your energy, money uh, and your relationships, uh, also your influence. Um, you need to learn how to steward those things for the bettering of the church for the, and for the furtherance of the kingdom of God. And, and, you know, the biggest thing is just be, be grateful, be thankful. I have so much to be thankful for. Uh, I don't think about you know, I, I mean, obviously I have to think about, you know, the things I need to do and, you know, my to-do list and, you know, I'm very busy. I have lots of things going. I have a family and all that stuff, but man, I'm, I am not striving to, to, to live up to something. You know, I'm, I am trying to serve. I'm trying to serve and I'm trying to steward what the Lord has given, everything that he has given me. And, and I think if, if you can learn how to be a good steward uh, of your time, of your money, of your resource, of the gifting at home, the gift that he's given you, um, and I think that, that, that your life can change. You know, I think that your life will be used for the furtherance of his kingdom. And um, like I said, don't ever get to a place where you, you, you're entitled or you feel like you're supposed to have something or you're supposed to be somewhere or doing something. It's like, man, I just trust God. Anything that I've never done, it's because God has something different for me uh, or it's not my time to do this or that. Um, and I, I find 
rest in the things that he gives me and what I'm able to steward. And last thing I'll say is, you know, you're always serving somebody else's vision. If you're serving your own vision, I don't care who you are. You need to stop right now. You need to stop serving your vision. Now, God may give you a vision. If God gives you a vision, it's still not your vision. You're just you're just stewarding the vision. It's God's vision, which means if it's his vision, he's going to pay for it. He's going to make it happen. And you're not going to have to hurt one person in order to do it. And, you know, and the other thing is serve other people's vision. You know, at, at, at the crux of what I'm doing, I'm serving my pastor's vision. I'm serving uh, my wife's vision. I'm serving my kids' vision that they may not be able to see yet. Uh, I'm serving whenever James calls me, like, hey, bro, I want, I want to do the song. I have this, he has a vision for me to be a part of what he's, all right, bro, I'm going to come serve your vision. Same thing with Mark. Same thing with, I'm always serving someone else's vision. And even when I'm, whenever it's not for someone else and it might be, you know, something that involves me, it's not my vision. It's, it's God's vision. And if you, if you ever can get to the place in your mind where you are literally serving someone else's vision at all times, You'll be in safe hands all the time because you never go wrong with serving somebody else's vision. I want to do the things I see To bring glory to my King The things that no one ever sees but you I want to do the best I can do what's right and take a stand And always lend the helping hand Like you So less of me And more of you Cause all the glory Belongs to you Oh, And I decree and you increase, oh, cause Jesus, my desire is to be unseen. To bring glory to your word And bring fulfillment to this world Like you And I want to do the things undone To be a father and a son But in essence just be one Like you So more of you cause all the glory it belongs to you Lord. and I decrease as you increase cause Jesus my desire is to be unseen so let my heart be not on earth put in the kingdom and its work and let my heart be in your name the one who always stays the same for all you've done and all you do so give me faith for and so true Lord my heart belongs to you Less of me and more of you, cause all the glory, Lord, belongs to you. Oh, I decrease as a human crease, oh, cause Jesus.
Jesus, my desire is to be. Oh, Jesus, my desire is to be. Jesus, my desire is to be unseen. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. Cause all the clothes 